Hi everyone! Today I'm going to review Halloween Kills. That's right, it is Halloween Kills Day. This movie, this long-awaited movie, is now in theaters and it's on Peacock. So if you can't make it out of the theater, you want to watch it from your couch, you can do it through Peacock. And you can get a Peacock subscription, I think for as cheap as five bucks a month. So for five dollars, you can see Halloween Kills as well as a whole bevy of content that's on Peacock. So not a bad deal. And it's available for 60 days. So you can watch it as many times as you want during those 60 days. So highly recommend checking that out if you're not comfortable going to the theater. So in preparation for this glorious day, I have been watching just a wide array of Halloween movies, you know, of course, the 1978 original, the 2018 direct sequel to that movie, which is actually the first in this trilogy, this modern day trilogy of Halloween. I also watched Season of the Witch, Curse of Michael Myers, the 2007 Rob Zombie Halloween, um, and more. So before I get into this review, I just want to let you know that I will be getting into spoilers. So if you have not seen Halloween Kills, go watch it. Then watch this. That way, you can enjoy all of those surprises for yourself, and I don't spoil them, all right? So with that, let's dive in. So Halloween Kills picks up right where Halloween 2018 left off. However, it's also a continuation of the events that took place in the original Halloween, providing viewers with newly shot footage of Halloween night 1978, replete with a cameo by a CGI Dr. Loomis. Yes, that's right, Dr. Loomis is in Halloween Kills. Uh, so while seeing what happened you know, after the credits rolled, if you will, uh, in Halloween uh, 1978, is a pretty damn cool concept. The voice actor they chose to uh, you know, bring Dr. Loomis to life just isn't very good. Uh, you know, they chose this actor, his name is Colin Mahan, Mahan, I'm not sure. Anyway, he only has 10 credits to his name uh, and he's just not very good. I mean, of course, some of the dialogue they gave him is uh, not terrific. You know, some of it even seems a little out of character for Dr. Loomis, but uh, his just delivery, it made me laugh a few times because it just sounds so um, absurd, uh, just like he's trying too hard. Anyway, what they should have done is they should have gone with Tom Kane. Tom Kane, if you recall, was the voice of Dr. Loomis in Halloween H2O, and he was really good. Uh, you know, Tom Kane has 258 credits to his name as an actor, a voice actor, and he's exactly who they should have gone with for this. I uh, can't imagine it would have cost them an arm and a leg to hire him, and he would have just done a better job. Now, the person who actually physically plays Dr. Loomis in this is Tom Jones Jr. Not sure if he's related to uh, the singer Tom Jones, but this is his acting debut. So he's the physical body. Obviously, they put a lot of CGI on his face to try to make him look like Donald Pleasance. And then the voice is Colin. Um, so anyway, that is a kind of a cool moment, um, you know, the cameo, so I can't complain. Uh, I definitely think the idea is pretty cool. So Halloween Kills, to me, is the most violent, brutal, and bloody of all the films in the series, even more than the Rob Zombie films. That's just according to me, of course, just my opinion. Now, this doesn't bother me in the least. However, I bring it up because... I know some people who like the original like it because it doesn't have uh, much blood, if any at all, and it leaves a lot to the imagination. So if that's the type of fan you are, you might not dig this. However, I understand why they took this route. You know, it's a modern audience, modern film, and you know, I guess people are just expecting them to up the ante from the first uh, one in 2018. And the one in 2018 was, you know, there were some brutal, brutal deaths in that. This movie takes it up like 
way more. So just keep that in mind. Actually, there were some epic deaths in this movie too, including one involving a fluorescent light tube. That is pretty gnarly. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> was bracing myself for that one because you, you see it coming and you're like, oh no, this is gonna be terrible. Uh, and it was, uh, but you know, definitely a fun time nevertheless. Now here's a random thing I wanna point out. Michael McDonald from Mad TV, the amazing comedian who played the man-child, Stuart, is in Halloween Kills. That's right. Uh, I haven't seen him probably since Mad TV. <laughs> but he's fantastic. And he's really good in this, too. And it's awesome to see him in a role that's predominantly dramatic and not comedic. Yeah, there's some humor to his character. He is a, you know, he plays a gay man living with his partner in the Myers house. And there's some light humor. But for the most part, it's a dramatic role. And I think it's really cool that he got this opportunity. I hope he gets many more because I enjoyed, you know, any scene that he was in, um, you know, any time he had screen time in Halloween Kills, I enjoyed it. So congrats to Michael McDonald. Halloween Kills does a fantastic job of providing fan service. What do I mean? Well, there's returning characters in this movie. You know, including Tommy Doyle, Marion Chambers, Lindsay Wallace, and Sheriff Brackett. Many of these are played by the original actors, which is pretty damn cool. Uh, you'll also see the inclusion of the Halloween 3 masks, which I thought, that's neat, right? I mean, this timeline pretty much ignores Halloween 3 and all of those sequels, um, yet it still kind of pays tribute to them uh, in subtle ways. And I just thought that was pretty neat. There's also, um, uh, you know, certain like moments, like when Marion Chambers is in the car and Michael jumps onto the roof and he does the whole hand against the glass thing. Um, just, or Sheriff Brackett, you know, says his iconic line of, you know, it's Halloween, everyone's entitled to one good scare. Just these moments in this movie really are just nice little references to the past and highly enjoyable. Speaking of things that make me smile, John Carpenter's score is phenomenal. I mean, it's a modern take on a classic formula. All of those themes that you love um, from the original Halloween, as well as Halloween 2018, you know, they're part of this. And John Carpenter just continues to elevate his game. You know, this score is timeless, otherworldly, and simply perfect. Like any good score, it helps ratchet up the emotions, uh, further immersing the viewer in the narrative they have playing out on screen. I mean, it's truly an all-time classic. Highly recommend it. Stream it on Spotify, buy it on Bandcamp, and just enjoy the fabulous sounds from John Carpenter. Other than the terribly voiced Dr. Loomis, the other actors in Halloween Kills are excellent. Anthony Michael Hall as Tommy Doyle steals the show, exhibiting raw emotion and a level of, a level of authenticity that I really didn't expect. I mean, everyone else, including Jamie Lee Curtis, of course, is fantastic, you know, making for a well-rounded, highly skilled cast. Uh, that I actually cared about and was interested in the entire time. That's something horror movies don't do enough of, you know, have character development or characters that are likable. Frankly, I like practically every character in this movie. Um, so it's really just, you know, well-casted and well-acted. So having watched Halloween Kills twice so far, I can say that it is a formidable and well-executed second part in the modern day trilogy of Halloween. That said, it very much feels like the middle of a book. What do I mean? Well, you know, it was highly enjoyable and it left me wanting that satisfying conclusion that hopefully we'll get when Halloween Ends is released. Uh, you know, I think it's essential that you watch Halloween 2018 uh, before firing up Halloween Kills. It's just, 
you need that context. I mean, yeah, you could watch this and enjoy it for what it is, but you really should watch Halloween 2018 to get the first part of this story. And if you have watched Halloween 1978, as well as its sequels, even better, because then you'll get all these references, like the masks and all of these other things. You know, Halloween Kills is a fun time. It lived up to my expectations and delivered a few unexpected yet delightful surprises. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. And thanks for tuning in. Happy Halloween, everyone.